Hey guys, before the video begins, I just wanted to let you guys know that my channel recently went through a tiny little change. Well, I guess it's not tiny. It is pretty big, but I will no longer be going by Screen Queen. Um, the name never really sat 100% right with me. It was more or less a placeholder name until I could come up with something better. And uh, while I was making this video, this name kind of just flew into my head and I was really, really into it. It was kind of a say yes to the dress. This is the dress moment. This is like, it is perfect. Done. So from now on, on the channel will be called overkill analysis which i think perfectly describes what i'm trying to do here which is ramble on and on about the shit that i like so okay on to the video the world of Scott Pilgrim is one that I fall into every so often and become absolutely obsessed with until I finish rereading the series for the hundredth time and then completely forget about it until the next time. There's just something very captivating about it to me and the movie is so criminally underrated that it hurts. It so perfectly encapsulates the tone of the comics while also making necessary choices to condense it for a film and the style that they went with is honestly pretty flawless. Although I would love to see it adapted as a TV show at some point, just so we can get the full experience, but that's neither here nor there. If you ever watched the movie and never got around to the comics, I highly recommend them. They really expand the universe and story of the movie. Anyway, with every rereading and rewatching, I get something different out of the story. Whether it's learning a new lesson or catching something subtle that I never noticed before, I never really get bored from a reread. I recently caught the movie on Netflix again, and there was something that just really bugged me throughout the film, and it was something that I never never really paid too much attention to, or rather, someone that I never really paid much attention to. Knives, ciao. With pretty much every rereading or rewatching of Scott Pilgrim, I brushed her off as the annoying, eccentric teenager we have to get past before the real story comes in and we get to meet Ramona. But this time around, I got to the infamous Scott dumping knives right after she confesses her love for him scene, and I had this overwhelming feeling. Knives Chow really deserves so much better. Now notice that I say deserves and not deserved, and that's because my issue isn't really with how she's written or portrayed. It's how she's remembered, and I feel like it's kind of unfair. If anything, this might be just a self call out because up until this time around, I didn't really care for Knives all that much at all. After reading the comics again and doing some research, I realized that Knives has one of the best arcs in the entire series. To be fair, the entire universe offers a cast of vibrant, interesting characters, so much so that you kind of look past how sucky some of these people are. It's so easy to completely fall into the world and in love with these broken, flawed people because they're so real and believable, even in this hyper-stylized universe. But for the most part, most of the characters are remembered in a positive light. Despite the fact that Scott and Ramona are pretty horrible, and so are their friends, but we still love them. I think half of us would be lying if we didn't have some kind of Scott Pilgrim phase at some point. I mean, for God's sake, I dyed my hair blue at one point because of Ramona Flowers. But I feel like Knives Chow has been done dirty with the passing of time, and liking her is more or less a controversial opinion. So I'm here to defend Knives, and remind us all what a badass she really is. Knives' story arc is a coming-of-age story tucked into the life of Scott Pilgrim. Because the story is told from Scott's point of view, we're mostly seeing Knives through this unfair vantage point, and she's literally introduced as crazy at one point. And I'm not about to say that Knives didn't do some out-of-line shit either. But it is understandable and it's also part of her character development. She's not alone in this comic for doing creepy or uncool things. Let's not forget who stalked Ramona into getting her to go out with him, and who stole Stacy's boyfriend right from under her, and who's dating a 17 year old at 23. That by the way, has always been really iffy with me. I looked up the age of consent in Canada and correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like around the time the comics were written, the age of consent was 14 later raised to 16. Knives was 17 when she met and started dating Scott. These comics were written in Canada, and in general, the age of consent in America is 18. So maybe I'm coming at this from a biased angle, but I'm just gonna come out and say it. Scott should not have dated Knives Chow in the first place. And I'm not alone in thinking this. In universe, it's a controversial topic amongst Scott's friends. His girlfriend is younger than his 19-year-old sister. Scott is 23 when he first starts dating her, and even though it's legal, you know there's a power imbalance there. You promise to be good? Of course I'll be good. Seriously, please be good. Are you guys okay, Shay? 
Should I call the police? I'm 23 right now, and I can't even imagine dating an 18 year old. And I don't think there's anything wrong with having an age gap in your relationship, as long as both parties are fully formed, consenting adults. But there's something about a naive, never been kissed before 17 year old girl in high school dating a 23 year old man that doesn't totally feel equal. And it's not. There's a moment in the comics when Knives finally turns 18, well after they've already split, and he literally tells her how does it feel to be an adult in the eyes of the law, which confused me until I realized I'm dumb because age of consent and legal adult age are two different things. By the way, it's 18 in Canada, which yeah, Scott, that is sketchy. I think Brian Lee O'Malley did this to showcase Scott as being bad with romantic decisions right off the bat, but it just adds a way grosser element to it all in my opinion. If there's anything I kind of wish they changed was Knives' age. I would just wish she was an actual adult when she starts dating a 23 year old, but Oh well, I guess. Despite the fact that Scott is totally respectful and not at all pushy in terms of romantic or sexual acts, he's still using knives for her innocence and naivete. When asked what it even means for him to be dating a high schooler, his answer is that it's nice and it's simple. Scott isn't trying to have a new relationship with all of its complexities and the hard work that comes with them. Scott is using knives because he knows she isn't going to demand anything out of him that isn't well within his comfort zone. Scott's last relationship was a long long time ago at this point, but he's still recovering from it and there are times when it seems like he's not over it at all. Like Julie says here, Dating a high schooler is the morning period. So what does this mean for Knives? From Scott's perspective, whether he realizes it or not, Knives was always going to be disposable. He had no intention of ever having this be a forever thing. We can see this with how quickly he ditches her for Ramona. No matter how cool and aloof she is, this is going to happen no matter what with someone else, especially knowing Scott's track record with the ladies. And true. That time with Lisa? That was a misunderstanding. That time with Holly? That wasn't what it looked like. That time he dumped Kim? Okay, or... me and Kim are all good now. So from the get-go, Knives was in a relationship with someone who just wanted something easy and simple, which isn't inherently a bad thing, but he had no intention of sticking around. And here's the thing about Knives' character, she's young. She hasn't been exposed to the quote-unquote cool adult world yet, so Scott basically sucks her into this world of rock bands and cool older guys and basks in the fact that she she's putting him on a pedestal for introducing her to this world. And his friends then become her friends too, and Knives begins to adapt. Knives comes from a pretty sheltered life at the beginning of the story, so this really is her beginning to discover the things that she likes and her tastes. But being an immature teen, she wants to cling to the person who's so cool and knows so much about music and is in a band, especially when she finds out that Kim used to date Scott in high school and starts to dress like her. She does the same thing later on when he starts dating Ramona. Knives does this basically with the mentality that if Scott likes them, then he's gonna like her even more for looking like them, which comes from a pretty immature perspective of what love is, but again, she is a literal 17 year old girl. And it's really sad that this is her introduction to the world of dating and even just the adult world. She even tells Scott later on how horrible it was because we don't really get a in-depth analysis of what happens to her, we just get snippets of her life after they break up. So finally the day comes that he completely ditches her to pick up the pieces for herself, and he replaces her with some random girl with bright pink hair. But the thing is, that's the best thing that could have happened to Knives. Like I said before, the story of Knives is a coming of age story, and her arc really isn't too much unlike Scott's. Knives becomes infatuated with someone with a messy dating history and becomes a little too obsessed until she's abandoned to figure herself out, until ultimately she realizes her self-worth, just like Scott. Except Knives is much younger and has never dealt with something like this before. And we find out that Scott has dealt with this quite a few times. I mean, it's literally the whole point of his story is the fact that he keeps doing this to people and doing this to himself when it comes to relationships and trying to avoid it and forget about it completely. Actually, in the comics, Nega Scott is pretty different from in the movie. Whereas in the movie, it's supposed to be his evil self. In the comics, it's actually just all of the suppressed memories and Scott having to face the things that he's running away from. So 
where Scott has to ultimately face the fact that he is, in general, maybe not the best guy after all. For Knives, it's realizing that she shouldn't be putting Scott on a pedestal, and that Wallace was right all along. She is too good for him. Which is why I don't really understand why people have the argument that Knives should have gotten Scott at the end, as if he's some kind of prize to be won. During my research, I came across an article that said that apparently the original ending for Scott was to have him end up alone, and I kind of totally understand that. I mean, it actually would parallel his story a lot more to Knives because she ultimately ends up alone to figure herself out, but I kind of think it's the best that he ended up with Ramona, and definitely instead of Knives. And we'll get back to that. Knives is not a perfect person. She let her obsession with Scott lead her to some bad choices and some really cringy dialogue, but who among us can't look back at our old selves and be completely embarrassed with how we acted and what we said? And those of you who had a Tumblr in 2012, I'm looking right at you. Don't tell me that shit wasn't embarrassing. And have you really grown if you haven't gone back to your Facebook page and just cleared out everything that was ever even remotely cringy. My point isn't to excuse it, but it's to deliver some understanding. I do feel like her exposure to Scott made her a slightly worse person during the series, but I think that was kind of the point. And here's something that the movie fast forwarded understandably, but it's in the books. When Scott abandons Knives, it's his friends that try and pick her up and help her out. One of Scott's friends, Stephen Stills, was the one to let her know that Scott was cheating on her in order to be with Ramona, which completely broke her bubble and tore down Scott's image in her mind from that pedestal that she had him on. Which leads me to a tiny segment I wanted to touch on that the movies understandably skip over. Yeah, so basically, Scott and Ramona briefly split up in the comics, and Scott is super down in the dumps. So Wallace Wells, total bitch, but also my favorite one, suggests that Scott just sleep around casually to help him get over it. If this was written today, think of it as Scott's Tinder phase. And who does he bump into but Knives, now 18 years old, chow. But Knives has grown up a bit. She's even dressing with her own sense of style. And she turns Scott down being all, dude, you sucked and you cheated on me, so no. But she's still a pure sweetheart and tells Scott that she loves him, but I love me more. And she's not gonna try and get with him anymore. You see that? That's growth. Also, I do like that Brian Lee O'Malley adds this like part where they're like, well, we don't like each other anymore, but like we can make out if you want. And it's just awful and terrible for both of them. And it's kind of just cements in both of their minds that this definitely would not have worked out if they tried dating again. And the fact that she does all this growing up within a couple of years in her teens versus however long Scott took to figure himself out is is pretty indicative of her maturity. Oh, you want another reason why she shouldn't have ended up with Scott? I'm not gonna compare these girls and make them compete for Scott because that wouldn't be right. What I will say is that Knives is much better off without Scott. And I don't think anyone should get Scott for being a better character or someone's fave. There's a reason why Scott almost ended up alone and it's because of his relationship with relationships, something that he and Ramona have in common. And while doing my research, I saw an article that said that Scott and Ramona are good for each other because they're basically holding up mirrors to each other's actions and can call each other out on their bullshit. And no, their relationship isn't perfect. They both have baggage and issues that they need to work out, but they relate and they're on the same level. And by the end of the series, we have a feeling that they're going to work things out together. That would have never happened with Knives. Even if she came to the conclusion that Scott isn't all that she thought, they'd most likely just slip right back into that one-sided relationship. Something the comics feature better than the movie is the natural progression of some of their relationships. Obviously, because we don't have a bunch of comics to develop Scott and Ramona dynamic, the movie makes their relationship feel a bit more rushed by comparison. Which is why sometimes I'll see the argument that Scott should be with Knives because she likes him more than he likes her, and that's better than the opposite being true with Ramona. But in the comics, Ramona and Scott have a mutual attraction. Even if Scott's a little obsessive at first, they end up being on the same level eventually. Knives and Scott are uneven from the get-go, and it never seems to balance out between them. Knives and Ramona are both great characters with pros and cons to dating them, but ultimately, Scott and Ramona would make each other better people. So much of the point of Scott Pilgrim is realizing that he's kind of sort of the worst and he tends to be a really awful ex, leaving a trail of broken hearts behind him despite how unassuming he looks. And so does Ramona, i.e. the trail of evil exes willing to fight over her. By the way, there's a quick aside I really wanted to make that really doesn't have anything to do with anything, but casting Michael Sarah as Scott Pilgrim was probably one of the best decisions they could have made. It's kind of crazy, but I honestly 
think it's genius because Michael Sarah seems to be like the very last person to be leaving a trail of broken hearts behind him. But that's kind of the whole point of Scott's character is that he doesn't seem to be like that kind of a guy, but he kind of totally is. If Scott ended up with knives, he wouldn't really be learning his lesson. Also, it would kind of be a square one situation a la How I Met Your Mother, where it's like, what was this all for? Knives has one of the best arcs in the entire series. If you blink, you'll miss it. She goes from this sweet, naive girl who's just excited to be part of something to someone cast out and hurt to the point of acting in a not so great way. She kind of serves as a real time example of the way Scott treats his relationships and kind of throws them away at the end. We watch her mourn over Scott, lose touch with the friend group she was briefly but so happy to be a part of, to finally taking some time to be on her own and be happy with just that. Knives' story isn't clean, it's messy, embarrassing, cringy, and sometimes kind of annoying, but it's also sweet and understandable and heartbreaking and too realistic for comfort sometimes. Meeting Scott is Knives' first footsteps into the real world, and unfortunately, she gets kind of caught up in her older boyfriend while she's also discovering herself. And the thing is, when you have a relationship like that, it's almost impossible to truly discover yourself because that other person becomes who you are. Knives is a good character, and she's better than Scott, and she deserves better. I'm too cool for you anyway. I put on my face, I tore my room.